Hello, this is Brian Casey of The Imaging Wire. We are here at ECR 2024, and we are here with Kiki Van Leeuwen. She is with Romeon Health, and she is um, an expert on uh, AI research. Kiki, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much for the invitation. You bet. So one of the big issues here at ECR 2024 has been AI. The theme has been next generation radiology, and we, we had a really cool opening ceremony where uh, an AI robot was talking to the ECR president. Um, one of the big issues that's been coming up has been quality and safety in, in, in AI, and that's one of the things that you've really been looking into. Can you talk a little bit about what are some of the issues that radiologists are facing? Yeah, so I've been in this space for quite a while, healthcare AI specifically, and, and also in the past five years mostly in radiology, where we've seen a lot of developments happening. Um, I was doing also a PhD at the Rappert University Medical Center, and when I started this in 2019, there, it was the Wild West. We had no clue what was actually on the market. There were so many companies starting, bringing out new algorithms, uh, showing off what they could do. Uh, but it was very unclear what was actually regulated, and which means that you can actually use clinically and buy as a radiologist. So in that research, the first thing was also creating that overview and transparency for users to better understand what is out there, uh, what might be a solution to one of their clinical problems, uh, specify also the product spec uh, uh, specifics, uh, and keeping track of the scientific evidence, because initially there was very limited validation data on how good these products actually were, uh, how they would compare to each other. Uh, luckily, a lot has changed. Uh, we've seen a lot more papers coming out, and we do keep track of that. It's getting more and more work to do. <laughs> Uh, and, and so you started AI for radiology, and so you keep track of all the different AI algorithms that are out there and, and what the FDA and CE mark status is for all of them? Yeah, yeah. so we, we have now more than 200 solutions listed. So that already shows how big this market is. Uh, we have, um, it's about 100 vendors, uh, about 45 I think are actually here uh, with a booth. Uh, so yeah, you notice how, how big this space is, and, and, and we try to, to, to keep a picture of what is out there, indeed, if they're available in the U.S., if they're available in, in Europe. And you just recently rebranded it, and, and can you talk about the rebranding a little bit? Yeah, so we used to be AIforRadiology.com, uh, but since this week we are HealthAIRegister.com. Um, and with also the idea that radiology is really at the forefront of this change and of adoption of AI. We do see also a lot of hospitals now using that. Uh, but of course, radiology is not the only healthcare discipline out there. Um, so we believe that also a lot of the other spaces are going to follow soon uh, and, and going to have the same similar problems as well uh, that radiology has been facing for the past few years. And so are you going to start tracking um, AI for other ologies like cardiology and oncology, things like that? Yeah, so our new name uh, opens up that opportunity that we can expand to other disciplines as well. Perfect. So uh, another really important project that you've been involved in is Project AIR and you had a, a really interesting paper come out uh, just a few weeks ago. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so in the beginning of January indeed we got a, re a publication uh, which was also part of my PhD thesis um, because as I said there were so many products out there uh, also a lot of similar products so they do uh, for example lung nodule detection um, there's not only one there are about 15 I think by heart that do lung nodule detection on chest x-rays and if you want to choose which product to buy um, it's of course quite difficult to then de decide which one suits my needs. And there's of course things like workflow, integration, these are important. Uh, but in the end, at the end of the day, the performance should be good enough as well to really help you out. Um, so what we did is we actually uh, collected a data set from the Netherlands from seven different centers. So it would be representative of the, the country's population. Uh, and we compared uh, these commercial products on this same data sets. So we would really know how they would compare to each other uh, for our population. So that's one of the issues with AI is that vendors come out and they say, oh, our product had a 0.90 AUC or whatever, but that was on their data. And then another product comes out and it's got also really high AUC, but that's completely different data. So you're, you're testing multiple different algorithms on the same data set. So it's like an apples to apples comparison, right? So it's something we know, of course, from a lot of consumer products, 
Uh, you have all these websites and, and test centers that uh, if you buy a smartphone, you watch all these reviews, you see these product specifications, you, you can read the test data. Um, but for healthcare, um, this is not very common to do yet. Um, and that's, that's something that we try to change to make that more common, because why not? That is increasing transparency in this field. So how do vendors feel when, you're com when you go to them and you say, well, we'd like to compare your algorithm head to head because they, they don't control the results. Do, do they, are they cooperating more or less? Well, that's indeed the first question. Can we control the results? <laughs> Can we decide not to have them published if we don't like them? And then our answer was no. <laughs> you sign up or you don't. Um, so of course that was a bit scary. Uh, another question would be like, can you report it anonymously, like an A, B, C, D? Um, that's indeed what has previously been done, but we felt like that's, that doesn't meet the purpose of what we're trying to do. We, we really want to increase that transparency, so we need to address the names of these companies. So um, it involved conversation. Um, not everybody decided to join, so yes, we had some people that, uh, that, that were reluctant and, and thought there was more to lose than to win. Um, on the other hand, I, I'm also very proud of that, uh, also the vendors that, that did decide to join because it showed also they, one, believed in their products, that they could do it, and also um, they trusted us. Because it does require quite some trust also from the research organization uh, that we would do it in a, in, a, in a good and transparent way. And we tried to put in all these measures so they would feel like know what we would be doing uh, and, and, and that they would have faith in the results that were coming out. So what can we expect from Project AIR and what can we expect from Health AI Register in the year to come? Yeah, so for Project AIR, um, there's a new PhD candidate starting in, in two weeks' time. Um, so she will taking on some of the projects that, uh, uh, yeah, that, that I was doing as well, uh, which includes uh, new validation studies uh, with the same methodology. Uh, so we'll definitely have follow-up on that and I'll be uh, involved on the sidelines uh, for that. Uh, with Health AI Register, we keep increasing the transparency on the market. Uh, we we, we track it all the time now uh, with new scientific publications coming out, news, um, uh, with that of course also Imaging Wire and, and, and we have kind of the same goal in informing everybody about what's, what's happening uh, in the field. All right, very good. Kiki Van Leeuwen of Romeon Health, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. Signing off for the Imaging Wire from ECR 2024, my name is Brian Casey.